Our friend and colleague, Megan Kelly, anchor of The Kelly File. Also, Megan is the author of the new book, Settle for More. We're going to talk about the book in just a minute. But first, let's discuss the latest transition. I think the breaking news this afternoon, Mitt Romney is going to come meet and the, 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 the word is maybe he's looking at the Secretary of State position. That's huge, right? That is so. big news. Yeah. And honestly, a credit to Donald Trump because Mitt Romney savaged him in that GOP primary. And so one of the main questions here, and obviously we're very interested to see whether Mitt Romney is going to be the Secretary of State, but one of the main questions as soon as Trump got elected was, what is he going to change his stripes at all? Is he going to do anything to reach out to you know people in the Republican Party with whom he hasn't gotten along or certain groups? And this, I think, says yes. Yes, he is, because as far as I know, they didn't have a makeup session, you know, that they still don't like each other. So one of his first moves is to bring in an establishment Republican who doesn't like Donald Trump. And if he winds up offering him a position like this, I mean, it would say a lot. Uh, Casey, Mitt Romney, um, on several occasions, it, it, actually on Neil Cavuto's show, questioned whether Donald Trump was hiding something in his taxes. Yeah. How do you how do you sit down and, and, and you know, break bread with, with that type of uh, someone who was that against you for so long and then do you go ahead and put him in your administration? I think it's tough, but you saw that there's a beginning of a peace accord when after the election there was a tweet out that Mitt Romney had congratulated him and he said it's very nice, just like we saw with the Bush family. So people are trying to build and mend fences. Yeah, I think it's tough stuff to kind of swallow it because when people make these kind of comments or things about you, you take them personally because it's tough. It's hard to hear. And then also he was very adamant against him about his taxes, about the fact that he was concealing something and that he should not be allowed or be chosen, you know, to be president, that he shouldn't be elected. That he was a con man. Yeah, and basically. So now let's see. I mean, do you think he's going to give him a position of that importance? I, I'd be surprised, but mm -hmm. you never know. Dana, so um, Reince Priebus, I thought, was a brilliant pick as his, uh, chief of staff. Mm -hmm. Do you think Reince had something to do with, hey, Donald, we really need to reach across and say to the establishment Republican group, you're still part of us? I don't, I don't know. I actually do think this is coming from the top. Especially with the Nikki Haley one, because she's not that different from Romney. And then early on, she endorsed Marco Rubio and was very vocal in doing so. So I think that maybe what Republicans should think about in terms of if it, if it is a big tent, then, then follow Trump's lead. If this is what he is saying is that let's try to all work together. And maybe he's trying to cre recreate um, Abraham Lincoln's team of rivals because that was a good way to govern. Um, then I also think not only if this is all true, because I take that with a grain of salt, a lot of leaks, but kudos to Trump, but also to them that would be willing to leave positions that they might have as governor or Romney in, in his private life, come out of retirement and, and agree to serve. Greg, um, uh, uh, Rudy Giuliani has yeah. said, I want mm -hmm. the Secretary of State job. He's basically said, he's John Bolton, we good, I probably would be better. How do you have someone who was really going to bat for you for a year and a half mm -hmm. And, and, and put it, it, or is this as maybe possibly just an olive branch to the establishment? And it, where it, it doesn't really mean to appoint him a secretary. It's hard to say. I mean, I think it's really brave of them to invite Ted Cruz over, given that his dad killed JFK. <laughs> I mean, you know, here he's, he's got a family background in assassinations. I'm, I mean, that's that's gutsy. I think it's good. I think it's a really good sign to have these people come over because, you know, Cruz was insulted by Trump and then Romney went after Trump. So it's like getting all of these people together. It's a positive sign. My favorite part of all of this is Nancy Pelosi. Nancy Pelosi told Pence to reconsider uh, appointing Bannon. So if you want to, if anybody <laughs> wants Bannon, have Pelosi ask to reconsider it. Because I just basically made sure that he's going to be nominated. Because <laughs> what, what are people going to say? Oh, Nancy, who would you like? Is Noam Chomsky good enough for you? We'll call him up right away. So that, I think a memo to Nancy Pelosi, you just basically got Bannon in by opening your big fat mouth. <laughs> by the way, I hope he didn't bow to the Japanese prime minister. <laughs> I can guarantee he did not. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm tired of the bowing. <laughs> right. Uh, so what do you, what do you make of this? From the are, left, right? you're watching this go on. You saw the fighting going on for a yeah. year and a half, uh, the, the bifurcation of the GOP. Right. Is this the GOP getting back together? Uh, I think it's more pragmatic than that. I think these people need to be confirmed. And what we've seen is, if you look yeah. at the State Department, John Bolton, you know, he was the guy for a little bit. And people said, I don't know if he can get confirmed. Rand Paul, remember, said, I would never, I would block him. And mm -hmm. Rand Paul in the Senate Foreign Relations. Then you just look at someone like Rudy Giuliani. And again, gee, he's taking money from foreign governments, from corporations doing business around the world. Could be complicated. Could make things difficult for President-elect Trump. 
So then you start hearing about names like Nikki Haley. And of course, you even heard about uh, Ted Cruz, Lion Ted, for either mm -hmm. Supreme Court or, or and you start to think, well, gee, maybe he's making up. And now you hear this talk coming about. I, I, I'm stunned if, if Mitt Romney, Mitt Romney, not only was Mitt Romney opposed, think about what happened in the state of Utah. Wow. I mean, he wow. tried to stop. He pushed at an oh, That's right? what I'm he, saying. He Can I ask you, Trump, ask you uh, Eric, because you know, you know could Trump be tooling them? Like exer exercising dominance by having them come over and just making them kiss a ring and going, get out of here. Well, maybe not get out of here, but, yeah. you know, yeah. never was going to really appoint him anyway. But, but That'd be I, very difficult. I, 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 say, from, to, to burn Rudy Giuliani, who said. No, I mean, point, I mean, point. I mean, Haley, Cruz and Romney. Well, I don't think so. I, and uh, I, I don't have any personal knowledge of this, but I will say this. You know, I have also been disliked by Donald Trump for some portion of his campaign. And. When I went to see him at Trump Tower after, you know, a brutal nine months, and this is documented in my book, Settle for More, mm -hmm. um, he let it go. He really was able to let it go. Once, once you know, we sat down together face to face, because we had always has a, had a good relationship, um, it was behind us. I let it go, he let it go, and we were fine. And I feel like I very much believe he has the ability to do that. And so, my, for what it's worth, I believe it's sincere. And I'll bet you Mitt Romney walks away if he's willing to and serve. He with something. And he said hmm. so that night that um, that he won on election night, or what, what do we call it, the morning? I remember mean, it was like 3.15 yeah, no. in the morning when he gave something, the speech. Yeah. One of the lines in the speech was, for those of you who didn't support me, that's fine, I get it, no problem, but now I'm going to be reaching out to you and asking you to help me be the best president I can be. And maybe, let's just take him out his word. Maybe, like, maybe he meant it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's someone go like, someone yeah. like Mike Flynn. Mike Flynn is a pretty controversial guy in Washington right now. Okay. But Mike Flynn, apparently is going to be the national security advisor. The key point here is Mike Flynn, who normally you would look at for a job in the Pentagon, Mike Flynn can't get confirmed. That's a problem. Yeah. So Why? he decides, I'll give you a position, doesn't require confirmation. So I think if, I, I have so much respect for Ryan's previous, and I think Ryan's is just thinking, how can we make this as smooth as possible? So if Rudy Giuliani doesn't get Secretary of State, and given his loyalty to Donald Trump, doesn't where, where does he go? Doesn't want AG. Where does he go? Like AG, it's a great job. Why not oh, counsel? Please. Why not? Mm -hmm. there, there are a few, few people <laughs> who may want that job as well. That's a tough job. There may a couple. Oh. Tough job. oh. Are you looking at me? No. <laughs> I mean, you no, no. I'm, I'm just very happy. I'm an ambassador to the UK. I'm very I'm happy to hear. Everybody care. wants that I'm one. I'm going to take that Department one in a second. Department of Awesomeness. Giuliani could head the Department of Awesomeness. I mean, I thought I you wanted the Department of Interior for the parks. I do want to go to the National Park. Maybe, I thought, but I'm not asking for anything. Maybe you me. broke not some happy. news tonight. I'm, I'm thrilled to hear that, that, that you guys met, and it's behind you. I, I think that's fantastic. I love oh, that idea. Well, that's it was in a special. Yeah, I know, but it's, it's great to hear I, what you say. Well, there was a special. Yeah. The, yeah. The, you know, uh -huh. the other stuff is, I think, a fiction of some, of some, right. some people on the left and the right who would mm -hmm. like to see that, quote, feud continue. Gotcha. But you know what, Megan? A feud gets healed, and then another one starts. You know, but it hasn't in our case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Can we do this? Let's take a look at Ted Cruz. He revealed what it was like to meet his former rival from the campaign trail earlier this week. Listen. It was very productive. I spent several hours uh, in Trump Tower, had, had the chance to meet with the president-elect, with the vice president-elect, with, with senior members of the transition team. And, and I think we had very good and productive conversations uh, about how we can work together to, to really deliver on the promises made to the American people. Uh, th this election was a powerful mandate for change. I think the American people overwhelmingly said, we want to change the path we're on, and, and I am eager and committed to working with President-elect Trump, to working with the new administration, to get it done, to actually delivering on what we told the voters we would do. So, so Megan, your, your thoughts on that is Ted Cruz really, would he really take a, an appointment, or would he want to step aside and run against Donald Trump in 2020? I think he'd take anything Donald Trump would give him, you mm. know, of, of the proper stature, right? I think he's yeah. shown a willingness to serve. Look, it was, a, it was a brutal primary by any standards. And Ted Cruz obviously has serious disagreements with Donald Trump. And Donald Trump gave it to Ted Cruz just as good as he got, right? I mean, he went after his wife. He went after his dad. Ted Cruz held on to that. You can't really blame him. Um, but now, again, they're, they're, he's willing to let bygones be bygones. It's like some of the stuff that happens in these political races, you kind of got to say, all right, like now he's our president, and yet you got to support him and root for his success, you know, just at, for, for the country. You may disagree with his policies, right. but you have to root for the, his success as a matter of, you know, him being our leader. I bet you Ted Cruz really, really would serve and probably be pretty effective as pretty attorney good. general. Hey, hey,
AG? I mean, it's got to be, AG right? AG or even a Supreme Court justice, because he is bright. He's talented. He's a very smart lawyer. He's had plenty of time in front of the Supreme Court as well, so he's going to know his way around the ropes. And for him, it's so almost boring. a bit Around the ropes. Right. And you get him, you get him <laughs> off the, the radar for good. Yeah. He doesn't <laughs> run against you ever. But yeah. can, he, can he be confirmed? Because those senators... Well, uh, this is they a they want to know. Know. They do you remember like when he, he couldn't get a vote on the Senate floor when yeah. uh, some of the bills he was proposing because the Republican senators wouldn't vote for right. it as well? But this is an it's exit a very pass. good point. But you know, here's <laughs> it's an exit pass. Out you go. Yeah. Take care. We'll miss you. That's, a good, that's a good point. <laughs> but someone like Nikki Haley, and I think she, if we talk, you know, you talk about Mitt Romney being big news, I think Nikki Haley's big news. I think it would introduce a woman into mm -hmm. the picture in a prominent position. I think she would bring in some of the minority support. The people would say, hey, this is a different look for the Trump team. So I think that's good news. And also, you know, when you stop and look at it, I, I was also impressed to hear that he was looking at Eva Moskowitz, who's a yeah. Democrat from New York, for education. She's, a, as I said, a Democrat, but she is a strong school choice person yeah, with school a success choice and charter academy yep. here. So again, right, right before he closes down the department. Well, I don't know. Thanks for the <laughs> He's got to name somebody. Shut it down. But I, I well, think Nikki Haley could get through, by the way. So yeah. that was I think it was also news today that Henry Kissinger was over there. The, the I think ultimate he, outsider. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, part of this argument is no lobbyists. That was also an announcement today. Five-year ban on lobbying if you come to serve That's with it. him. What did you say? I thought that was aggressive. Like five years is a long time. It is a long time. So for someone like Ted Cruz also, that could hit you in the pocket. Mm. Mm -hmm. Anyone? Yeah, also I think Ted Cruz would be a bit of a redemption for him. It would elevate him again in a different stature because if he decided or wanted to run again, then he also has the robes or, you know, kind of the austerity of being attorney general that I, I, I think do would like look the, good. I do like the fact he's taking his time. I mean, everyone's saying, why isn't he announcing more appointments? It's really, he's really on schedule. Even with, David with Axelrod other, defended other him. Presidents, yeah. Let him take his time. Remember, he promised to make massive change drain the swamp it's going to take a lot longer if you're draining the swamp you're ch choosing from a completely different puddle <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me excuse me a I different mean, puddle well my point is if you don't, if you don't have the same swamp i mean you, you, let's say let's say you go from hillary clinton to um jeb bush oh, let, let me right? see. so let me there's see. a lot of infrastructure let me see, let me see. A, a different swamp john bolton rudy giuliani and now well, you're talking about Mitt Romney. Yeah. I've never well, heard of these people. I would, this is a new swamp, I would, I would, America. I, would, I, would I never heard of these Republicans. Rudy Giuliani part these, of the DC these are radical would you, outsiders. Would you call him part of the DC establishment? Rudy Giuliani. Yeah. I, he was mayor of New York, yeah. I yeah, believe. You, you would. I believe he was the prosecutor. That would, in that would def, that'd be what, the definition oh, of a yeah. DC outsider. What interesting under Reagan. One interesting thing about the whole Mike Flynn thing is that it's it's signaling a difference about priorities. That it's no longer about old rivalries between Russia. We're replacing the Iron Curtain with the Islamic Shroud, the idea that the number one threat for us in our lifetimes, and even beyond our lifetimes, will be Islamic extremism. So I think that that is a signal oh, yeah. that perhaps, even though there are problems with Russia and those problems are real, we have probably more in common with them existentially in this war against this bizarre extremist demon that wants to destroy Earth. Is kind of a bigger deal. That, that's not, remember what Mitt Romney said? Yeah. He, he, said, he said Russia was the number one enemy, so I don't know how he and Mike Flynn will Number one that. geopolitical. Uh, <laughs> we got to go, because when we come right back, Megan's staying with us to give us an inside look at her highly anticipated book, Settle for More, that's coming up next on The Five.